Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number, 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. How are you? Good. Survived Bobcat? Yeah, I certainly did. I did, too. I enjoyed Bobcat. He's a nice guy. He is a very funny guy and also very uh, congenial guy. He's a friendly guy, easy guy. Right. No celebrity attitude there. None. All Loveline guests should be as nice as Bobcat. And a fan of the show. Listens and For enjoys years. the show. For a long time. Yeah, but I think he likes it more now. Anyway. <laughs> you ready to go to the phones, Yeah, Drew? let's go. You know what we have coming in tonight? Lush. L- oh. That's right. You know what we're doing on Sunday? Nothing. We're going to be broadcasting from Caltech. Oh, that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. That's right. If people want to come down and meet us, come for about the hour before the show, which will be 7 o'clock at the Beckman Auditorium. And uh, we're going to be giving sort of a presentation. You can come and get some stickers and T-shirts. And I'm trying to get Weenie Rose tickets for uh, to, to be given in some fashion out in that uh, venue. Uh, that would be huge to the people who know what you're talking about. All right. Tom. What? To get Weenie Rose tickets? Well, nationally, people know what you mean. Ah, it's an L.A. thing. Tom, yeah. 17, you're on Loveline. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey, I got a couple questions for you guys. Um, well, you know I'm from Chicago, right? Um, well, you got Lush on the show, right? Yeah. Um, my question is, why is it so hard for, like, guys my age to stay with one person at the same time? What's going on in the background there, Tom? Well, I'm, all right, I'll say I'll start going out with somebody, right? And are we, like, going out with him for a while? Tom. What? What's going on in the background? Oh, my fault. Oh, you can hear something? Yes, we yeah. hear plenty. Oh, all right. It was more interesting than you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, I'm just wondering why it's so hard for me to stay with, like, one person at the same time. Like, I'll be going out with somebody, and I'll end up, like, just, like, wanting to go with somebody else. You know, do you know why that, I mean, I don't understand. Yeah, it goes way back to the dawn of civilization. Man was put on this earth to spread seed and then uh, not necessarily stick around and raise the crop, just plant the seed and then move on to the next uh, open field, basically. And, and that's and that is since that is sort of the natural instinct, the hard thing is to remain a monogamous. That's the challenge, but that's where people tend to find it a lot of... Ma- it does not matter how hard I try. No, Tom, but you, you can do it. You can do it. Look, it is possible, okay? Plus, you, you kind of get the fight taken out of you somewhere between the age of 16 and 26, where you just realize it's more trouble than it's worth it's not that you don't want to screw around but you're just broken you're you're like a you you know you're like a cat that's been swatted too many times and you want to go up on the sofa but you realize eh, you don't want to get the stupid squirt bottle so forget it you'll just lie there where you are and wait to die and and it may be that that being really truly genuinely connected with somebody is painful for you or something you're avoiding a couple long-term relationships but uh it's they still end up getting screwed up no matter what happens tom what's your longest term relationship been thus well, far for me year and a half well, yeah, not, not bad. bad not bad yeah that, so you are capable of it tom just uh, yeah, maybe but, really what you're asking is why do relationships have to end right that's, that's the, what you're asking yeah and that's because that's what people do at your age they get in relationships sometimes they get in too intensely i mean i'm i've definitely i mean i've been with a lot of girls in my like i mean some of them don't last but I mean, like with a lot of girls. Tom, relationship ending is good. It suggests uh, progression. You're healthy. You're moving on, and then you'll find one that sticks, and you'll stick with her, and you'll have some kids, and everyone will be miserable. Kids make you happy, Adam. They do yeah. for for like ten minutes, and then the rest is just one big embarrassing moment after the next. They're naked. They're running on stuff. They're only, banging only on the if, furniture. Only if you have friends like you is it really truly embarrassing. <laughs> Teresa. Yes. Twenty two. You're on Love Line. Yes, I have. Two questions. Um, the first is I have a very, very sensitive gag reflex, and I've only performed oral sex twice, and I was wondering if there's anything that I can do to maybe relax it. My, my two-year-old is very upset. Yeah, you know, you, you I... <laughs> I think if the gag reflex wasn't so bad in you, you probably wouldn't have the kid screaming in the background, right? <laughs> no, I love her to death. I wouldn't trade her in for anything. Teresa. Oh, yes. 
There, yeah, there should be some sort of thing. You know, they have all kinds of uh, things on the market for snoring and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Mouthpieces and, and uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Drew? There's all this yeah, technology. I know where you're going, How but I, I don't want to How come science has not turned its attention to important things like this? Okay, wait a minute. Now, now Adam, I've heard your piece on it. No, I was wondering, Dr. Drew, how, how many is kids there do you, anything I can do about how it? How many kids do you have? I have one. I have one child. And this is something that's important to you, that, that you want to do? Um, yeah, it is, actually. It's probably more important to her husband, but all right. No, are, you, are you married? No, I'm, I'm, I'm recently divorced. Hmm. Well, you, you, you did make it to the ripe old age of 22 before you guys uh, dissolved the relationship. Yeah. So that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's some yeah. kind of record. Uh, I don't know of anything that you can actually do. Oh, really? No, uh-uh. Um, but I'll tell you, name? Teresa, yes. don't feel badly about it. It is the ultimate form of flattery <laughs> for a man to almost kill a woman orally. <laughs> All right? Okay. And just uh, relax a little bit. Well, Play okay. a tape of whales uh, humping and, you know, get into a little, uh, burn a little incense, do a little yoga, maybe a little biofeedback. What is biofeedback, Drew? It's a way of trying to control automatic functions of your body. All right. Then it would be a good time to mm-hmm. do that, wouldn't it? Tom? Yes, sir. 25, you're on Loveline. Good evening, sirs. Hey, Lush is going to be in here in a few minutes, you know. I'll sleep better tonight knowing that. Good, sarcastic man. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, man. Oh, here's the situation. I'm currently having, I wouldn't say an affair, but... uh you know, hopefully starting a relationship with this woman, you know. She's like, uh, she's 12 years older than me. That but the like, only problem that like is Peter she's going to die of cancer soon. And I was wondering if it's bad of me, if I'm a bad guy or a creep, you know, to pursue this before the body's cold, you know what I mean? All right. Well, so, yeah. uh, Tom, yes. yeah. she's 37. Yeah, she's 37. She, her body's riddled with cancer? No, no, His, no. Her, her, her husband. Her husband is dying of cancer. Yeah. And she's going to pretty much divorce him anyways or wait till he dies. And I was wondering, you know, if, if, you know, I don't know if I'm the bad guy for getting into this or not. Because I it personally, I don't want to sound cold, but, you know, once he's out of the way, things will be, you know, more convenient for me and her. Yeah. Well, why don't you just, like, uh, sick Kevorkian on him or something so you can get uh, laid a little sooner, Tom? Well, he's in Michigan. Well, wait till he falls asleep and just put the pillow on his head. You know, no court in the land is going to convict you of first degree. He'd probably just get manslaughter. Yeah, you know, I don't think bad thoughts of the guy or anything. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do here. Tom, how long? How much longer does he have? <clears throat> I would know, six to eight months. Why don't you let him live his life in peace and huh. in some kind of happiness and don't screw around his relationship with his wife. His wife may well be sort of retreating or running away from the pain that she experiences while having to watch him die. So she may need support and help. And Oh, I'm giving her the support. And now. maybe it's sort of turning into... We don't into mean supporting her breasts, Tom. We uh, mean emotional support. Yeah, and it, it may be getting into sort of an intimate kind of a relationship now, but I would advise you to kind of hold back, be supportive. You'll, you'll, you'll be involved sufficiently soon enough. Just don't, don't. Tom, do yeah. you want to be hooked up with the kind of woman that's going to cheat on her dying husband? Is that what you're looking forward to in a relationship? Well, not really. I be, I'm pretty healthy myself, so I'm not going to have that same situation. Well, you sound emotionally fit as a fiddle, Tom. <laughs> but l- let me, with, with a string or two missing, but let me say this. Huh. You know my theory. However, the woman's last relationship ends is how your relationship is going to end. Now, I'm not wishing cancer on you, Tom. Yeah. Not totally. Uh-huh. But, but I am saying this. You are going to get, you're going to reap what you sow. Uh-huh. If she dumps this guy in his time of need, one day you're going to need her and she's going to be going out with someone else. Uh-huh. So have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Do whatever you want. But get ready for this. It will happen eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he agreed. <laughs> Drew, am I right? Uh, yeah. You want to know how your relationship is going to end with anybody? This is males and females. Go find out how their last two or three relationships ended. Find out how that ended. Yeah. That's like, how yours will end inevitably. But that guy, Tom, gave me the creeps. Yeah, me too. Mike. Yeah, um, I have a question a little bit off the topic we were talking to. You're 20. Yep, but um, I snort cocaine, and um, my I've lost my sex drive. I have erection problems, and... I mean, how much can I do where I'm not going to lose it, I mean? Because it does kind of, it's a turnoff for my girlfriend. This is back to our theory of last night. 
You know, the guys, people are going to keep abusing drugs, especially males, until you tell them it's going to affect their erection. Right. Th- then they'll stop. That That's is, where they draw the line. That is an alarm bell. And indeed, many of the drugs that people get addicted to do cause various kinds of sexual dysfunction, some of them permanent, some of them just while you're using it, that, that's really the only thing as an atheist that makes me believe there may be a God, is whatever it is you abuse goes straight to the penis. <laughs> Everything straight to the penis. It's like there's a guy up in some loading dock in your head, and they're going, a uh, shipment of uh, cocaine has just come in. All right, send it down to the penis, Bob. Put it on the express elevator right down to the penis. It's hey, we have, some, we have some cannabis coming in. All right, well, uh, put that in with the coke. And uh, put it in with the Mickey's Big Mouth right. and send it right down to the penis. And those are the three that that uh, catch the uh, the quick elevator, the express elevator. Right. And maybe that's good because Mike would probably do coke until his head was a sieve. I'm not that bad. If his penis was never affected by it. All right. But, Mike, you understand it's a problem. Um, I, I, I'm not really ha- having that much of a problem. How much do you do? About two grams a week. All right, that's enough. Do you have a family history of alcoholism? No. You sure? Um, well, way back on my mom's side, she has some uncles who are alcoholics. Okay, so it's possible you inherited that biochemistry. It's possible. Yeah. Uh, your mom may just not be an alcoholic because she hasn't developed a relationship with alcohol yet. Yeah. Uh, so this may be the evolution of a very serious problem. But she probably well, would have developed a relationship with alcohol by no, now. No, no, not some alcohol. That's how it skips generations. Some people just avoid it. But because they know they it, kind of have a problem. All right, but if, so, but mom would have come on to it now at age uh, no, forty-five no, or no, fifty. Not necessarily. She may be an alcoholic, turn alcoholic when she's sixty. She may there, never have alcoholism. She there may is never some do. family information about this. So, my uncle had my uncle was a cocaine addict, and he had committed suicide. Okay, Mike, that would go uh, fall under the heading of history. Family history, right? Yeah, well, uncles that kill themselves after doing too much blow is is definitely what Drew's looking for when he puts that out. Uh, but I thought, like, I mean, I'm just more worried about the erection thing, but I mean... Uh, we know you are. But, like, but the fact is... Upper, I mean, doesn't it get your blood flowing? I mean, no, it gets it flowing fast. No, it needs, there's a balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. If you override yeah. it with unnatural stimulation, things don't work. Either the erection doesn't happen or the ejaculation doesn't happen. But uh, please be careful, Mike. And whatever you do, don't smoke cocaine. That's an even a different disease. Smoke cocaine delivers a massive dose to your brain. It's pr- so profoundly addictive that uh, the disease process there is devastating. Yeah, because you'll lose your erection by snorting coke, but you smoke coke and your penis will actually hop off and <laughs> jump in your ass. Did you know that, Drew? I wish I, I, wish I had said that. <laughs> Jesse, 15. I wish I could say that anyway. I wish it happened. Guys, You're on Loveline. Um, I think I have a problem. I'm really not sure, and I need your help. Um, okay, a couple weeks ago I went to my first gynecological a visit and she said that my uterus it stands instead of like flopping over it stands straight up and she said that when I have sex I'm a virgin and I've never had sex before and she says that when I have sex I'm gonna have to have it to one side or the other of my vagina and because it might hurt yeah yeah and I was just wondering if this will cause problems with conception I doubt it um and, but my friend told me, because she has sex, and um, she told me Cat? that, Mom, I'm on the radio. Oh, no, Lindy? Oh. Mom. Hey, Jesse, let us talk to your mom. I'm sorry about that. She deserves to know about the uh, the uterus with too much starch in it. Um, no, I don't have starch in my uterus. Well, it said it stood straight up. No, but um, will I have trouble reaching orgasm? No. Because my friend says that when you have an orgasm, your uterus, like, goes up. No, you'll be fine. Are you sure? <laughs> your friend. Your, your friend, the gynecologic expert. No, no, not my, my uh, that's not my gynecologist. And she was, like, nervous telling me this. She said right. Your, your friend, the pinhead, who's in ninth grade. No. What friend? Just a friend. Okay. But, but she's not an expert, is she? No, but, but my gynecologist was, and she wouldn't tell me. She was just, just nervous about it. And she's like, um, there's something wrong with your uterus, and... No, no, no. Well, she wasn't nervous. And that's not, is that a real serious thing? No. Girl? It's not? No. Oh, okay. Jess, you'll be fine. Okay, thank you. All right. Happy um, scoping. <laughs> so, Drew, how, explain the uterus thing. Uh, draw the uterus there, would you? Yeah. Uh, draw the good part first. <laughs> okay. You want to right, Drew's drawing a... Yeah, but... 
Okay, where's the uterus? Can I reach uterus with my penis? Yeah. I well, can? you can reach cer- cervix. Oh, I can? Yeah. Well, not me, but, I mean, could one, theoretically... Here it is here. It sits, it sits in here. It's this container right here. Uh-huh. And it's... All right. And it flops... What's it made out of? Uterine wall muscle, basically. And there's some uterine tissue. And the, the lining of it is one thing, and the, the wall is another. And if you rolled over to your left, would it flop over to the left? And some people, it flops. And if you roll the right? Some people, it flops. And what if you hopped up and down? <laughs> I'm just trying to learn. What are you doing? Yes, we are back here on Loveline. The phone number for Loveline, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number, 310-854-4455. We have Lush in studio. That would be Chris Auckland and Mickey Bernini. No, (laughs) Bernini. All right, I caught it. I caught it immediately. Bernini. Thanks for coming in, guys. Cheers. Cheers is the English for well, it's it's almost mahalo in English. It is mahalo. It What's is it's, mahalo. That's Hawaiian for thanks. How are you? Hello. Great. Hello. Right, 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 yeah. Discard your rubbish here. <laughs> it's it, it All really. Purpose, but Tom. cheers, cheers is good. It's a, it's a, a hell of a lot better than what we have, which is kind of like yeah, <laughs> or so, or, or, or hey, duh, or duh. <laughs> All right. So you guys were just talking. Are going to finish up your tour tomorrow night? Yeah. At the Palace, a oh, lovely yeah. place. Have you played there before? Yeah. Yeah, we have. It's kind of a neat old uh, sort of Art Deco place, or it, at least as much uh, culture as we get here in the States. It's uh, That's culture, is it? <laughs> from, well, a disco. From an architect. <laughs> well, so, well, it's like a few arches is the, culture. Oh, yes. <laughs> Believe me, if, it's, if it doesn't have aluminum sliding right, windows and stucco plaster, on the outside. There's plaster on the wall. That's All culture. Right. right. Here's right. the deal. If there's drywall on the wall, it's not culture. If there's plaster on the wall, it's culture. So it's not Stonehenge, then? But absolutely not. No, what what is the old I think we have some pretty old malls in the valley though. There's this one seven eleven that's it's pretty shabby looking, Drew. I think it's uh, out in the West End. Anyway, Love Life is the name of the C D and uh you guys are touring and supporting that and that's all going swimmingly, I'm sure. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants to go home. It's the last date it is the last date tomorrow, so everybody's really knackered. Is it is it back to England? Yeah. Back to England for about a week, and then we come back, and we're doing that weenie roast thing. Oh, now don't don't say it with that tone. That well, is, so a I don't huge. know what a weenie roast is. Is that a hot dog? Here we have this tradition where we take the parts of the cow that that nobody wants to buy, and we ma- we mash oh, them it's a up. Cow? I thought it was pork. No, I think it's a cow. We take oh, like it? the snout and the hoof and <laughs> entrails and stuff like that, and we mash it into the shape of something that's sort of palatable looking, right. and then we put it in a bun, and just to forget what's in it, we smother it with a bunch of mustard and relish and ketchup and, and that kind of thing. You guys are from England. Right, you so, know about so that stuff. So basically, it's a hot dog. It's a banger. It's yeah, a hot it's a dog. banger is what it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's, it's a banger roast is basically what we're going to have. So do they have tofu pups there? Oh, yeah. You, you can get anything. This is like a big outdoor thing. They have that reggae uh, jerk chicken, and you can get uh, you can buy, like, beads and incense and smoke stuff. People and, get pierced and weird yeah. things in there. Right. You can get uh. tattoos, and you can go nuts. I think you can get on, like, a pottery wheel for 10 minutes and make an ashtray. It's, it's, it's a real good it's a feel good thing. And basically, everyone gets sunstroke and food poisoning, <laughs> but they have a great time. So it's a festival. It's a festival. Hey. Oh. So you guys are going to have the times of your lives. All right. All right, now we're going to go to the phones, and as uh, uh, tradition would have it, you guys are going to jump in and give advice to uh, confused uh, American teens. Arthur. Yes. 19, you're on Love Line with Lush. Hey, how's it going, guys? All right. <laughs> okay. First up, I'd like to say, before I even start, June 15th, I'm there. Now, I have a small problem, guys. Yeah, I think he's talking about the weenie roast, but Arthur. Yeah. Y- is your small problem your phone? I think so it is right now. What are you talking into? Let me trade phones. All right, let me just give a quick message to all the Loveline listeners and potential callers. Whatever your best phone is... Please use that. Please use that phone when you call in. I don't know what you're saving. Is there some kind of hotline? Is Commissioner Gordon going to be calling any moment? You Just go ahead and shoot your wad. Use your best possible... Equipment on the Loveline phone call. Wouldn't you agree, Drew? I think you'd be smart. What's he? He not want to wear out the good phone? 
Arthur. He does like talking to that flip top apple. Arthur. Yeah. You on your good phone? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. I hope. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, right now, I got this job I've been at for almost a year now. And about, I'd say three months ago, this new girl came in. Uh, she just, she's 18. You have to be 18 to work there. And I never noticed her until all of a sudden all the guys started walking by. And then they started looking by. When I noticed her... I kind of just became somewhat obsessed, and I've talked to her. I mean, she's real nice. She has a great personality, but sometimes, I mean, I hate mixing business with pleasure. But this is one time I should. I think I should forego it. What I'm thinking is, I mean, what's your guys' opinion on this? All right. Well, first, you sound a little confused there, Arthur. Definitely. Secondly, where do you work? At uh, ESC. I'm a machinist. Okay. So what what is she like the oil drum girl? <laughs> no, she's a what's called a CNC operator. Oh, one of them fancy operators. That's a fancy. Uh-huh. And so so she's she's got the leather smock and the uh, eye protection and everything? Pretty much. Oh, yeah. that can be a turn on. <laughs> Big leather gloves. Oh no, yeah, no, no. I like a woman who earns a wage. No, these are the ones that uh are like robes, and they wrap around about waist length. All right, let's let's not <laughs> let's not get into machinist fashion for for ten minutes here, Arthur. But listen, yes, you got to make your move. Okay, you're not going to have this job forever. True. I'm guessing you're this close to being fired as is. Yes, I am. Okay, then. So let's prioritize. Uh, uh, what do you think? I think he sounds like he's in love. He's in, he's in love, and right, Chris? And that's exactly what happens. You just look at someone all the time, and you take notice of him, and. You want to talk to him? But has he right. talked to her yet? Oh. Have you talked to her, Arthur? Yeah, I've talked to her a couple times. And is what? she interested? I I don't know. I mean, I haven't really asked her if she's interested. I mean, it's difficult to tell because you can't always you think, tell? I can't. I could never tell. But if, you can never tell. Yeah, can you? if someone's actually into you, you just talk. Yeah, you just guys think, are stupid, I think I'm a tell. fool. You know, I'm, I'm a fool. I just said the wrong thing, <laughs> and then you're really surprised when they actually say, "Oh, you're all right." You know what I mean? When you actually get to talk to someone, right? How often you're intimidated. <laughs> yeah. But that's why you join a band. You don't have to worry with all, about all that small talk. You just send them back to the trailer. Oh. Chris. <laughs> but, but you guys have had bad jobs before the whole music thing took off, right? I <clears throat> never had a job. Oh, you never did? I'd, I know. Actually, I had one job handing out leaflets outside Selfridges. All right. And if there was a really cute guy who was handing out leaflets with you, you, you would have made your move because you would have known that this job's not going to last. But, but, but love could last. No, I would never have made my money. All right. Back. Thanks for helping me with that point. <laughs> Arthur? Yeah. Well, I think the consensus is go for it. Go for it? Yeah. Sounds good to me, guys. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know why people call this show. Hey. <laughs> I, guess, I guess they don't. Lisa. Hi. 19, you're on Love Line with Lush. Hi. Um, hi, Lush. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Pretty good. Well, I have a question. Well, I have a problem first. I'm nine months pregnant. I'm due any day now. And my boyfriend, he he likes to party and he likes to hang out with his friends. And he's been telling me all through my pregnancy that he would change. But I don't think he's gonna because on Friday he had told me that he wouldn't get to this party on Saturday. And then Saturday after he got off work, he went straight to the party. And he didn't even call me or anything. And we're supposed to be moving in together, like, the 6th of June. And I'm, like, scared <laughs> that he's going to, like, break my heart and, like, ditch us. What wow. How tough for you. Well. Yeah, it's tough, Lisa. Well, you're, you're so vulnerable right now, and he's, he's really not treating you right, is he? No. We get into our arguments and stuff, and since I'm pregnant and I'm very emotional, my, like, spares go up and they get down. But, Drew, you notice as soon as you go after the guy just a little bit, she defends him. She defends him yeah. like a like a mother badger protecting her hole. No, I know he does bad things. I do. Yeah, this guy's kind of a jerk, Lisa. I mean, especially now when you really need him. Oh yeah. And you are emotional. You are vulnerable. I mean, my God, uh, it's it's one of the uh, most vulnerable times in your life, and the guy's treating you like hell. Yeah, he. Um, are you planning on getting married? Not. Right now, my father wants me to. Well, give it a little time. Move in. Have, have a, a few, few more kids. Have yeah. a few more kids. Have yeah. uh, have like a soccer team, and then you can think about getting engaged. <laughs> That's no, so amazing. I have this one. That's so amazing. I Lisa. Can't... 
Yes. How old is this guy? He's six months younger than me. Oh, for <laughs> Christ's sake, this this could be trouble. Chris is shaking his head. Just... How old is that? Well, old, he's 18 and a half, and she's 19. Right. <laughs> Has he got his good points, though? Is he Very nice slight. to you? I mean, has he got good sides to him that he sort of, he's nice to you and he supports you? Or is he just always sort of like off out with the boys? Hmm. Lisa? Yes. Does, does he have a good side? Yeah, he has a really good side. He, we go out like to the Inner Harbor and stuff here in Baltimore and we go to movies and we do. All right, so he's not all bad. No, it's not all bad. But he's really screwing up during a crucial point of the relationship yeah i mean it's not like you're you're a month pregnant <laughs> or it's not like you're just not i mean this wouldn't even be acceptable to a lot of people even if you weren't pregnant and were barely going out yeah you never know though i mean he may be panicking about this child coming this he may just be <laughs> acting out right now yeah but i think lisa you need to you need to be more deliberate more assertive be able to set rules and and make him live up to his responsibilities at least ask him to see if he can and let it be known to him exactly what your needs are yeah, and I, I would plan on getting by without him. Mm. I, I, I hate is, to is this, say it. Is this happening in England where, where with this thing happening in this country where people have kids and then they think about getting married? Maybe. Yeah. It's happening there? I, used to, I grew up in, like, sort of a small town, uh, and a lot of people that I grew up with all had sort of kids by accident really early. I'm not and, even sure. And they, and they keep together for a bit, and then they split up, and then they do it again you know it's i get the sense this isn't by accident these people think oh let's have a kid it sounds like a nice thing we'll we'll go to a movie and they'll have a kid well i don't think they lie down and plan to have a kid but i think they they just go screw it whatever happens happens you're right right just like facing the responsibility once it happens see if this was an accident with lisa lisa yeah did you plan on having this child it wasn't planned didn't i just say that yeah yeah but it wasn't an accident but you weren't going to do anything no, it's so, right. It's a boy, and I love the fact that I'm going to be a mom. I have everything he needs. And oh. Right, except, except for the family, except for money and a house. Yeah, and a husband. Yeah. Right, but oh. don't, don't but, worry. I mean, but do you just want? Do you want the kid for yourself anyway? Uh, which is what's so terrible is people are having kids to satisfy their own narcissistic needs, no, or they need to I have mean, something you know, to love or someone to love them. That's the worst reason to have a kid. No, no, the I'm worst. not saying that. But I mean, yeah. even if, would you? You know, would you want the kid even without him? Yeah. I could raise him without him. Yeah. Right. Then I think that's all right, really. You and, and, and Uncle Sam? No. I I work. Well, I used to. Yeah, but, I mean, how are you going to work when you have an infant? It's going to be hard. I'm all right. Wait until he's, like, six, eight weeks. All right. Mm. all right. Well, anyway, let's not live in the past. Lisa, you got your work cut out for you. There's no yeah. doubt about that. You sound sincere. You sound devoted. And uh, please raise your kid to be smart and not to have other kids before he gets old enough or she gets old enough to handle it. Oh, definitely. All That's right. It's going to happen again. Good. <laughs> yeah. People just don't. It's kind of like, well, I'm going to ride a motorcycle and I'm not going to wear a helmet. And if I crash and turn into a vegetable, I'll be a vegetable. But if I don't, I don't. They just don't. It's kind of like, eh, whatever happens, happens. Sexually. I mean, in it's, terms of birth control. I think it's more that... People think, well, if, you know, I'm, I, if I get pregnant, I'll have somebody who loves me anyway, and it'll be fun to raise a baby. And this sort of fantasy about what child rearing is is just right. ridiculous. Let me tell you what my plan it's is. Calculus. No, I, I know this sounds, uh, it might, might be a little shocking to you people who are on the other side of the pond, but I believe <laughs> that the Lisa of, of the world, when they go to get assistance, financial assistance from the government, they get the NOR plant with the first check. Hmm? That's it. No more, no more kids. Unless you can take care of them. If you can pay for them, if you can take care of them, then that's fine. Have as many, have a litter. Do what you want. But it, it's just, this country's going to go right into the ground. All right. Let's move on to happier things. Drew, pick a fun call. The guests are, are visibly <laughs> upset over here. That's a terrible here. thing to say. What, what do you mean? What, so that you ain't, the only way you can have kids is if you can afford them? Yes. Mm. I think that's completely unfair. It, what do you want to do? Well, I... I really think that's a terrible thing to say, actually. Well, who should take so care of like, them? Well, you know, that's what states are for. That's what state funding is for, is to look after the future of your country. 
Right, but if we get enough of these people, then the state goes down the down the drain. What do you mean these people? Enough unwanted kids, enough parents that can't take care How of their you know kids. How do you know they're unwanted? How do you know they're unwanted? Just because they have them and they're not planned doesn't mean they're not wanted. Well, they can't be properly taken care of. They right, don't and have that a... is what the state is there for, to properly take care of them. But who's funding it? I mean, what's the state? I don't, care. I don't, I don't... mind. I don't mind paying taxes for people to have children. I don't care. I pay taxes. Oh, I don't. I pay taxes too. But if it if it gets to be too big a problem, then it's going to run the state so dry. So only the right sort of people can only, have children. I, it's then. like only the rich people should have education. It's like it it's is, not. It's not about rich. It's just it's about having right. a job and being able to be responsible for it. So you think anyone who's poor is irresponsible and doesn't deserve to have children? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> You can make 15 grand a year or 12 grand a year and still take care of a kid, but you can't be a single mom who cannot work because you have to stay home with your child and have absolutely no source of income. I mean, that is going to drain the system. I'm sure some of the best mothers are single mothers. Oh, I'm, there's no doubt they may be good mothers. I'm but sure they are. I'm sure because they have to do so much more. Well, yeah, they're yeah. there. I mean, they can't go anywhere. They can't get a nanny and all that. All right, Drew, thanks I, for bailing me out, I by the way. Just, you big by moron. the way, I just love this. This is just fantastic to to to, to point out what a right-wing reactionary Adam actually is. Just, <laughs> just I think, is magnificent. But, you know, I'm for legalizing drugs and prostitution, <laughs> so I think I can save myself with that. <laughs> Nancy, 18, you're on Love Line with Lush. Yeah, um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, well, I'm 18 years old. Yeah, you already said that. Um, and I wet the bed. And, and you have your whole life? Yes. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, I've tried lots of things. Like, when I was younger, you know, my mom's tried, like, not letting me drink things after 6 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. And, like... She's tried the little prize thing if I don't. And Have you had any psychological evaluation to see what's going on? Well, my mom, I've been hypnotized like once or twice. Mm-hmm. My mom thought that, that, that That's was... not a particular good way of doing it. Have you uh, uh, had any medical evaluation? Do you know there's any urological problems? Yeah. Um, like once I was told that they thought that it was a sleep disorder because I sleep real. I'm a really hard sleeper too. Okay. And um, there's a there's a medicine out there called DDAVP. Yeah, I have that. Do you use it? But yeah, when I use it, it works. It's just that it's so expensive that I can't have it all the time. Oh, okay. you know they say it's hereditary, Drew. What? I was what? a bedwetter. I bet I wet my bed late till I was like. Uh, well, I don't know. I think I took a few years off somewhere, <laughs> but until I was like ten or eleven or something like that. Mm. And it turns out. People thought it was like an emotional thing, right? But it turns out to be a hereditary thing. It, it turns out to be much more biologic than it used to be thought to be, right? And uh, this DDAVP works very nicely in sort of reversing the problem and causes you to hang on to your urine so it never gets into your bladder. Fantastic! And, uh, what do you mean you hang on to your urine so you, it never you, gets it, in your bladder? It's a hormone that uh, causes you to hang on to fluid. Your kidneys are, are, are stimulated to hang on to fluid, so but they don't. Nancy said she's taking that and it's not working. No, it works fine, but you can't afford it expensive oh, you know what'll work i swear to you whenever i used to sleep over at my grandparents house <laughs> my grandpa used to wake me up i'd go to bed at like you know 10 o'clock at night and he knew he didn't want to deal with the sheet in the whole nine yards so he'd get his ass out of bed and he'd come wake me up about 12 30 maybe one o'clock and he had a bucket by the side of the bed and he'd like shake me and pee in the bucket you know and it was a little demoralizing for an 11 year old after urinating a bucket while grandpa held it but it worked but every time i did that it worked that's exactly what it sounded like. So, Nancy, either get one of your grandparents to move in with you, or why don't you set your clock, your alarm clock, for like three hours after you go to bed each night, get up, and relieve yourself. I could try that. Try it. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Good luck, Nancy. Oh, well, an actual answer from the, uh, from the right-wing extremist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back uh, with Lush, and we'll talk about uh, their CD, Love Life, and we'll get into more uh, heated uh, political debate. We are back with Chris Auckland and Mickey Bereni. I think I got that right. Both from Lush. 
with the new CD, Love Life. The phone number here on Love Line, 1-800-LOVE-191. The fax number, 310-854-4455. We'll talk a little of the guests, and then we'll get back to the uh, phones again. So you guys are going to do the date at the Palace tomorrow night. Then it's back to England. Take a little break. Then it's back here again for the uh, famed weenie roast, or banger roast, as we're now going to call it. <laughs> and then uh, after that, you'll be in the States with nothing to do, or what, what are you going to do after that? No, we've got a summer of festivals yeah. in Europe. So it's by, so you're, are you just coming back for the weenie roast? No, there's a whole load of sort of radio festivals. There's about eight or nine in the space of about two and a half weeks. So we're going to sort of from Boston to New York to L.A. to... Pittsburgh. 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 Just covering every territory there. And is <laughs> is that fun? I mean, getting together with bands that maybe you haven't gotten together with and all that? I don't know. We've never done them before. <laughs> we, but you did Lollapalooza. We did Lollapalooza, which was a kind of daunting prospect on the first day because we were sort of very frightened. Because <laughs> we go backstage and there will be these ministry roadies with tattoos and, right. you know, looking mean. And they were... No, it was great. We had a really good time, and everybody was really nice. And you got great. to hang out with the Pearl Jams yeah, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers and all that kind of thing. Yeah, it was good, but it, initially it was quite a frightening But the radio thing. thing's different, because it's like different each day. Yeah. It's different bands and stuff. Because on all the blues, you sort, of pick, you sort of get into a sort of, you know, a rapport with people, you know, and you sort of hang out with Ministry or you hang out with Pearl Jam or... Right, and you tour around and you yeah, do it for a little yeah. while. and you sort of leave and you're all best buddies and you hug each other and you go, I'll write to you. And you never and do. And then you never it, do. You never do. <laughs> but but do, you, do you find... Yeah, it's kind of like camp for rock bands. It's, it's it like is. summer camp, except for a lot of hookers, cocaine and stuff like that. But <laughs> let me... Not, no, not, not no. for Lush. Not for you guys. No. No, no absolutely not. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't see any hookers. Did you? I saw one with Bon Jovi access all areas oh. on her ass. She wasn't a hooker. She was a mother of two. Oh, yeah, she was. She, she did was. tell me she was a mother of two. Too, You're saying that? hookers can't be good mothers? Oh. All right. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, another political debate. All right. But All right. Let, me, let me, something just jumped into my mind and I was thinking about it. When you guys go out and play a date like uh, tomorrow at the Palace, the place is going to be filled with Lush fans. When you go out and do one of these festival type things, you got people that showed up to see Pearl Jam or, or any other bands we talked about. People yeah. who showed up to see Lush, yeah. but not everybody there came to see Lush. And... Is there sort of competition? I mean, do you find yourself putting out a little extra more to try to win over the crowd or anything like that? The Lollapalooza is like, you know, we played before Pearl Jam. We, by that time, we sold about a billion records. It's <laughs> yeah. just like lush, and you just sort of look at all these people looking for the seats and going, oh, there's a band on stage, and looking <laughs> up and seeing you. And then, but I don't know. No. There's no competition. There's no competition. But, but do you find yourself on stage thinking... We are. I'm gonna. We're gonna have the best freaking show ever because we're gonna win these. We're gonna show these people that we're just as good as Pearl Jam, or we're gonna try to win over this crowd. No, you can't even try when it comes to that. You just do your best. You know, I don't imagine that a load of Pearl Jam fans are gonna turn up and think we're as good as they are because they want to see Pearl Jam. You know. Right, but there's always like uh, at the Weenie Roast I went to a couple of years ago. Uh, Green Day was there, and no one had heard of Green Day. And people came to see the Pretenders and whoever else they were going to see, the uh, uh, Ramones and groups like that. And Green Day came on and blew everyone away. Yeah. And it was really kind of neat because everyone walked away Green Day fans, and you kind of get that opportunity doing this. But I think that would be great if you didn't have to try. You know what I mean? <laughs> people just saw us play and just thought, oh, my God, they're the greatest band. But we don't actually go there and go, come on. <laughs> like us, like us, like us. Oh, you know? they... It's like, it's difficult because we're not sort of driven by that. Right. It's, it's good to play to people who haven't heard you, basically. And right. Hopefully, like a load of people go, oh, they were really good. I haven't heard of them before. I've heard that one single. But it's not like we're not Oasis and we're not going, we're the best band in the world. <laughs> right. and you you know, say you know, yeah, what you want about hard, Oasis. We're hard. We're hard. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, good, because you, uh, we hate art in uh, Love Line. <laughs> we certainly do. But it, it'll be a good opportunity to, to get to a lot of people who you normally wouldn't uh, get a chance to go out and see Lush. George, 22, you're on Love Line. Yeah, hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Good. Um, yeah, I got a quick comment and a question. Um, my comment is uh, I think maybe they should uh, teach the kids in school. I mean, you get sex education, but you don't get uh, the whole shabam, you know what I mean? You don't get the further down the line thing. I mean, um, like what happens after you have sex, you have kids. Yeah, you know, I mean, you should. It's just... quite, quite a leap of logic you need to apply to be able to come to that conclusion, too. 
Oh, Drew, quit being sarcastic. Not everyone's as smart as you. We're not all college material. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, people are uh, poor, and if you're in a public school, it's like they uh, teach you really quick, and then they get rid of you. Right. You know what I mean, and they don't show you the whole down the line, you know, process of life. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. A little, a little more openness, a little more reality, but and that, uh, you know what? I that's what? why that's why personally I believe in what we're doing. Is because yeah. I don't I don't think I, George I think even if they presented that to you in school you wouldn't listen because it's the teachers presenting it to you, I think forums like this where you guys generate the information yourselves is what you're going to listen to. All right, thanks for plugging the show, Drew. George, you have a penis related question yeah, for Loveline? Actually, I do. Oh, um, great. Me and a bunch of buddies here at work were wondering, um, the more okay, the penis is a muscle, right? Wrong. Wrong. So it's so it's not true. The more you exercise your penis, the bigger or the, str the stronger it can get. It is not true. That is correct. Be believe me, I would have uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> oh, for a penis for that, right yeah. now. <laughs> Mickey, right, you can vouch for that. I can vouch for that. <laughs> she has a sense that you spend a lot of time by yourself. So I'm just telling you. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, I thought she had some personal experience with my penis that I wasn't aware of. <laughs> the photographs. <laughs> yeah, it's not really filling out the pants here too well, is it, George? Yeah. Yeah, so it really, you'd probably be better off praying than you would putting a uh, dumbbell on your penis, wouldn't you, Drew? You can. Yeah, I, I'd seen those things in magazines where they stick your penis in this thing and pump it up, and, mm -hmm. you know, why the hell do they make these things if they're, I mean, is it safe? Now, here's why they make these things. Cause Money. Be, right, exactly. Because if they say, may enlarge your penis, and and they can sell anything, right? And they can charge 35 bucks, and then... It comes with a money-back guarantee, but we're all, I mean, you're all too embarrassed to return this uh, godforsaken suction device that's just gathering dust in my closet now. I mean, are they going to take it back after I stick my penis Absolutely in not. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to wash it. <laughs> all right, George. All righty. Thanks, guys. All right. Lose some weight if you want your penis to look bigger. All righty. All right. It's really, it's really the only uh, good answer I can come up with. <laughs> Jeff. Hey. Hey, you're 29. You're on with Lush. Hey. How's it going? Good. Hi, this question's for Dr. Drew. My mm -hmm. girlfriend's the one who told me to call and get some uh, professional advice, if you will. I am trying to talk her into shaving down below. And her theory is if there's hair there, it's for a reason. She doesn't want to shave it off. She's wondering if there's some kind of, like, effect or something that could happen from Do you just, know, you being get, protected. No, but you, you can get a razor burn. I mean, the process can hurt, hurt you, but uh, there's nothing medical that's going to happen to you as a result. Okay. How how do you want her shave clean? Yeah, I do. Why? <laughs> Tired of going down there and getting a mouthful of hair. Yeah, but you it's can. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Maybe not a mouthful, but get little hairs here and there. So I don't know. I like the way it looks too, nice and clean. Jeff, what if she asks you to shave yours? Uh, that's a little different. Uh huh. I think, well, I'd probably do it. You would. I'd do it if she'd do it. Well, why don't you cut her deal then? You have a big shave party. Oh, so we should do? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think it would be sort of an, an act of good faith. And there wouldn't be any kind of side effects for either one of us. No, as a matter of fact, again, it makes your penis look larger. <laughs> the less debris around the penis, the larger the penis looks. I, I really liken it to, like, you know when you have a mailbox out on a lawn and the mower doesn't get right around the mailbox, and after a couple of years, the weeds and things that grow up around the 4x4 around the four four that's stuck into the ground, it starts looking shorter. You cut that thing down, you got a whole new mailbox. <laughs> Did you just think of that? Ready for delivery. I yeah. hope that's not <laughs> Absolutely, oh, Drew. My God. All right, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks a lot. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, that's nothing. Are you kidding? This is a very tame night here on Love Line, isn't it, Drew? This is like the yeah, McNeil Lair report of Love Lines. I mean, we, we're, we're doing a pretty heady show tonight, aren't we? Drew, would you sit up and talk into the mic, for Christ's sake? I just, whenever you get in trouble, I'm just backing off tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, because one day I'm going to back off. You always do. I do? Yeah. I'll never back off. Okay, anyway. Uh, let's Actually, talk you about... don't. You jump on the pile whenever people are picking up. That's me. right. Let's talk about love life for just one second. Now, we have a song called Lady Killers, and we're going to play that song. You guys want to say anything about it? No. <laughs> We're not playing it right now, though. No, we're going to play it in a few Chris, minutes. Chris, you say something about it. Chris, what's the oh, deal? I, Who wrote I'd, it? Mickey wrote it. It's about three different blokes that have approached her in the past and tried to chat her up and get her into bed. And it didn't work? And each time, three blokes 
And one's a very famous English comedian, and that's all I can say. Oh, <laughs> the rest of them are anonymous, and they're both Americans. <laughs> you got it on with Benny Hill? I thought I knew you were going to say that. For some reason, I thought the first comedian you'd turn up with would be Benny well, Hill. It's either that or one of the guys from Monty Python. Or no, no, it's, no, all right, no, I'll tell you who it is. comedy after that. I'll tell you who it is. It's that guy who does all that pantomime stuff, who has that rubber face. You oh, know he, what I'm he talking about? Just Rowan Atkinson. No, that's my Rowan dad. Ad. No. My dad does pantomime. Really? No, he thinks him. it's Rowan Atkinson. Oh, it's not, it's not Mr. It's not Bean. It's not Mr. Bean, no. No, it's not. It's someone else. Who All right, knows. we're gonna we're gonna figure it out during the commercial, yeah, yeah. and we'll be back after this. All righty, one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Back number three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. Chris and Mickey both from Lush, and we have a little something off Love Life, and it's called Lady Killer. Lady Killer off of Love Life. From Lush, and we'll be back in 10. Yes, and here we go again. We're here with Lush. We're here with Chris and Mickey, both from Lush. And the phone number here, 1 800 L O V E 191. The fax number 310 854 4455. I'm Adam Crowley's Dr. Drew's board certified. And what, Drew, what did you want to plug? I wanted to plug the fact that we're going to be out on the road on Sunday. We're going to be in uh, Pasadena at Caltech. And uh, come down to Pasadena, check it out, watch the show get broadcast out of Beckman Auditorium. Visit Old Town. It's a nice place to hang out. It, and, it doesn't really matter and, if people show up, though, does it? We don't need them. Well, we're going to have a discussion beforehand at like 7 o'clock. So You're people, having a discussion. Yes, I am. So people want to come about 7, it'd be great. I'm rolling in and, drunk at uh, 8.30. And I'm trying to entice people. I'm trying to get a hold of some Weenie Rose tickets. So people, And we'll have keychains and t-shirts. Now, I may drop my pants before the night's through. That's, oh, that'll joy. bring them down. That'll bring them in. <laughs> oh, yeah. The kids come running when I threaten to drop my pants. Nick, 17. You're on Love Line with Lush. Sorry, man. My name's uh, Rick. Oh, all right. Um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, I have a cousin. I'm not sure how she's related to me. Um, put it this way. She's the hottest thing I've ever seen. Um, she, okay, she's related me, to me because my dad's cousin is her dad. So she's like a second cousin. It's a second cousin? Is that? Do you know if that's legal in the Catholic Church? Listen, what you're thinking is a sin, Rick. But listen. How old is she? She's 18. Uh, go ahead, Adam. <laughs> you finish your thought. I'm sorry. That's really how the family thing should work. I, I've just devised a new system because everybody gets confused. And there's a lot of broken families here, meaning there's a lot of like step families and people like we were talking about saying, hey, you think it's Uncle Jack your whole life and then you realize he's just a friend of your family? Right. I think, by the way, the reason your parents make the person an uncle is to deter him from molesting you. <laughs> Maybe I thought it was to encourage them. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, it could it could get the, it could get Uncle Jack or Uncle Lou excited. But I think if they think, hey, uh, he's like my nephew, I'm I'm not going to get loaded and, and feel him up at his at his you know birthday. But here's what I figured out. Here's the new system that should come in place. There's nieces, there's nephews, there's aunts, there's uncles, there's half you know, there's third removed and all that crap. Here's the way the family system should be broken down into. People you can have sex with and people you can't have sex with. Like your sister would just fall in their head no sex. Well, are they supposed to wear a badge or something? Well they just put like an N S or just a big scarlet S on there. Right? So I go around and make yellow stickies and stick them to them. Right, right. Yeah. It's all part of my big master plan of sterilization for the country. But Nick, <laughs> it's Rick. <laughs> oh, right, Rick. I'm sorry. The the screen says uh, Nick, and that's why I'm confused. Rick, listen. It sounds like legally you can have sex with her without fear of having mongoloid kids. Yeah, it's not. There's not that kind of consanguinity there. But but it's. And it still sounds kind of crazy for the family. It's going to be kind of weird for you. Well, she mentioned it to her mom, and she said her mom was cool with it. All right. Well, but I don't know how. I would say be completely open about it, and if you hit any real resistance on the part of your family, you got to back off. It always seems a little desperate, too. It's like <laughs> uh, you couldn't go out and get someone from school or from work. Well, and what's wrong with keeping it in the family? Well, well that's <laughs> a British point of view. Uh, that's terrible, Mickey. <laughs> 
I was going to say Southern Comfort in Britain. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. Just like, cue the... well, there's a great history of inbreeding in Britain. There is. That's yeah, why the royal family. That's why the teeth are all messed up over there. All that what are you bad about my blood teeth? going around. Oh yeah. Great teeth. Oh, you do have good <laughs> yeah, teeth. Thank you, Mickey. Let's see that. Oh, your teeth are good too. All right. <laughs> Actually, my teeth are bad. Jeffrey. Yeah. Twenty-one on Love Line. Hey, Chris, Mickey, Dr. Drew, Adam, your analogies are wonderful. Thank you. Um, I guess I have what I consider a problem. I'm 21, and uh, I'm going out with this girl who pretty much just wants to have sex a little too often. And I was wondering if there's any way to get out of it without seeming like I'm not interested or... I don't know to I mean it's great when we have it and I I appreciate it. We had a, a child recently of two months and Wow. I yeah. thought that the uh, desire would kinda calm down and I can concentrate more on my art and my studies, but it just seems to have increased intensely and Jeffrey, maybe you should treat it like a like a pet prom. Maybe you should spray some apple bitters on your penis so so she's discouraged, so she associates your penis with a bad taste. And then we'll stay away from it. Well, then would you stay away from it altogether? It's just, I mean, is there any way I can, like, maybe set up a schedule? Or, uh... <laughs> yeah, I'd put her on a sex schedule. Would, would that? Yeah, I'll really... tell you what. Jeffrey, why don't we talk to her and we can work out a sex schedule? Something that'll work for you, her, and, and myself. <laughs> oh, man. Um, that might just about alleviate the problem. I, I don't know. Where is she? She's working. Oh, she's working. And what what are you doing? I'm watching the baby. Resting. You're staying home and soaking your wanker, right? Oh, and that's another thing. Too, what? Is, um... We're allowed to say wanker here. It's oh, cute wow. to say wanker. I don't know in England. You it... say that on the air. Well, here's the deal. In, <laughs> wanker. In... <laughs> say it again, Chris. Wanker. It's wanker. It... wanker. Yes. God. Wanker. Look, I don't know about that. I think you should um, <clears throat> say, look, I like it sometimes, but not all the time. And and I, I like I, to masturbate sometimes more than actually have, have sex. With right. Her, yeah. sex, but it's like I can't do that and then be expected to perform yeah. right after that. And then I don't want to tell her, you know, I just kind of... I was but how, how, often, how often is... A lot. Is too oh, much? It's usually in the morning and then kind of before bed. Pretty much every day. So twice a day. <laughs> Which is nothing. <laughs> See, I think. <laughs> I was thinking about. Well, I don't know. I mean, everyone works their own schedule. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but no, I think. I, I mean, I think you should basically do it when both people want to do it. Mickey if wants to go. Like, I don't want to do it, and it's not. Nah. Mickey, you saying that's a light day for you? <laughs> that's not much, huh? I don't think it's that much, is it? It isn't really. Yeah, but picture thinking... yourself married to this person. And this going on for a year. I mean, this isn't a quick, you know, in for the weekend kind of thing. This is the long haul. This is 14 times a week. Yeah. Let's do some math here, Drew. <laughs> times that's 28, that's uh, 56 so times a month. Why get married to someone? No, I think when you, <laughs> when you start off with someone, you sort of usually go at it like rabbits. You know? Right. After a bit... You know, it sort of works down. To okay, like, all right. You know, all right, Chris, quite... what does it work down to? Oh, ten times a day. <laughs> <laughs> you stud. <laughs> yes, there's the wanker uh, erosion that goes on. Right. Yes, okay. the wanker wears down. And plus, Jeffrey, here's something that women don't understand. You like to pleasure yourself once in a while. Yeah, how do, how do so I... So do women. So do women. Right, but women... See, men have a long refractory period, meaning women can pleasure themselves... And also be ready for a guy, you know, a little bit later on. Guys pleasure themselves, and they're, you know, they got to get about four hours of TV they're in done. before they're ready. Yeah, they may be done, especially if they're married. And then she thinks I'm not interested when I can't get it out when she wants it. Right, and she takes that's, it personally. That's, so well, how can't do I do something else? Do so I just tell her I have a headache? or No, you just say that I'm physically knackered. And I can't do it. And it's nothing to do with I, I don't love you or I don't want to do it. It's just like that I'm physically incapable of doing it. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's fair enough. Mickey, what would you say? Oh, fine, whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm crossing my legs. It's all right. Chris, <laughs> yeah. can you do me a favor and say Billy Whacker once? Billy Whacker. <laughs> I love Thanks. All right. Stay away from your Billy Whacker for 10 minutes and give her a chance, would you, Jeffrey? Okay. All right. Thanks. Just take, take a lot of vitamin B. That'll help? Yeah. 
<laughs> At least uh, it will give the placebo effect. I see that I it will. I just realised my mum's listening to this. All right. <laughs> oh, no. Yasuko. All right. <laughs> Is she? Give it a rest. I just forgot completely. Uh-huh. Oh God. Where where is your mom? She she's in town. She lives in LA. Yeah. Oh, she does. Yeah. Oh, she knows you're going to be on and listening. Yeah. All right. but I just forgot. All right. Well, you, you you've been you've been fine so far. Except we we can go back and delete that part of the show. <laughs> Nicole, twenty, you're on Loveline. Yeah. Um. Okay. I have a situation. I have two bisexual girlfriends. Um. We've been friends for probably about six or seven months now. They're really good friends of mine. Um. At first, it was kind of weird, but I got used to it because they're really nice and whatever. And a couple days ago, we were at one of the girls' house partying, and we got kind of drunk, and there were some guys over there. And um, we ended up hooking up, you know, with one of the guys. And then when they left, I ended up kind of getting it on with one of the girls. Um, I haven't talked to her since. This is last weekend. And... I have two questions. I don't know how to ha- like approach her now, um, and isn't that kind of weird that I mean I did that? And well, I these have... these are friends of yours. So you want to keep a relationship with? Well, yeah, but I feel so uncomfortable. Now. But you don't want that kind of relationship. No, no. It's just you got all you got all revved up. Yeah. You know, people, it's like, uh, I hate to use the pet analogy again, but, you know, you, you take a dog and you start doing that on it, you start doing that, and eventually you, you let the dog go and it just starts humping the closest pillow. <laughs> people are that way, too. You get them all revved up, you get them all fired up, and you send them on their way, especially with a couple of beers in them, and look out. It's a girl. But that's what happened to you, right, Nicole? Yeah. You got all worked up. Yeah. But I don't know how to talk to her now, and... I mean, well, I you could probably just go back to being friends. She probably understands what went on. Yeah, but wonder if she like thinks I like her or something. Mm, she probably understands the situation. A, she probably would have called by now. B, she knew about your sexual proclivity beforehand and knew that wasn't something that you were dying to do, and it just sort of happened. And then C, she might be as embarrassed as you are about it as well. It's quite possible. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Mickey's mom's listening, so I'm not going to ask her about any <laughs> lesbian See, exploits the, or anything thing. like that. That's the thing I'm questioning. We didn't just kiss. I mean, it... yeah, we know. Okay. Believe me, this is this happens. I, you know, I I swear to God, a year ago I would have went, oh my God. Now it's kind of like, oh, sure, yeah, you well, got you, on with another chick. Well, you've been listening. You've been on do this you show think for a while it's now possible too. Possible for a heterosexual female to do that with another girl and not be kind of swayed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was a real uh-huh. fast uh-huh. yep, yeah, Mickey. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong. A woman is a very beautiful, uh, very aesthetic oh, yeah, shape. Oh, she's a temple, isn't uh-huh. she? She's Go a on, temple. Say it. <laughs> yeah, she's a temple, and there's nothing wrong with getting in there and and having uh, temples of the same sex rub a little uh, the temple the, uh, stuff. Uh, He's getting while. really carried I away, think, isn't I he? I think you get drunk, you do things, and then you just I've, about Hang on, them. hang on. I've seen Chris snog blokes senseless. And I've got a snog. Right. A snog. Oh. What's snogging mean? What is a snog? A snog is a sort of uh, kiss and a grope. Kissing, kissing with tongues. And it, uh, basically, it wasn't anything. It was just two blokes right. being <laughs> friendly. But not like, and that was just like, you're my best mate. <laughs> Give a snog. And it is, it's, a, it's a drunk thing. It's something you do when you're drunk. And I haven't done it that often. You do that well, when you're drunk? I, 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 I get carried I away, I see Mickey you know. snogging birds. Oh, I used sure. to, all right, okay. I used to go out. All right, all right, I used to go out with Chris. A, a bird remember, is a girl, by the way. I remember you getting so yeah. angry with me because I was listen, snogging full, my full, best mate. Yeah, full story. Bad, oh, all right. Bad part of the relationship. Wait a minute. Wrong time to let me do. Let me all translate. Right. Settle down, you two. Let me translate for no. a second. <laughs> They were going Chris, out. Chris, male uh, penis owning Chris, <laughs> did a little snogging, which is uh, would be. No, we, I did the snogging. No, Chris did it with Chris his mail. Chris did a little oh, snogging no, with his butt. And she's buddies. outraged by it. You see, she talks about because it. Because she was not. I snogged Melissa and you got so angry yeah, with but that, me. Yeah, but let me tell you, it was the day that Tottenham got beat by Arsenal. <laughs> Oh, well, that's the sure. two football teams, and that was the end of the night. And our relationship was about at the end, and she wouldn't talk to me anyhow. So it was like that was a bad time. So it was the last straw. She wouldn't snog me, but she snog her best mate. Well, I'll tell you, so this is my look. I've got a load of problems that I want to talk last about. Last time uh, Arsenal won, I blew Drew. I was that right. upset. Oh yes, yes, I know where you're at. I snogged him right off. But <laughs> didn't I, Drew? Look, there's nothing wrong with a little snogging once in a while. But I say. Was it Tina? 
<laughs> oh, I don't what? even remember anymore. Can, right. Look, can if, anyone I, remember? if Arsenal win, you can snogger. Yeah. <laughs> all right, but but let me just say now, hold off there, Chris. You're all man. Yeah. No one's gonna no one's gonna question that. And that's the great thing about being an Eng- uh, being English, by the way. You can do stuff like snog. <laughs> and it's kind of cute. <laughs> Dress you know? up in it's kind of nice. You snog a you snog a bloke. Everything's fine. You're gay. Here you you make <laughs> you out are. you make out with a dude and it's kind of weird, but you snog a bloke everything's fine. But Chris snogged a bloke that Mickey was interested in. Is that is that what happened? No, no, it's no, Chris, no. And, you Chris, it all Chris, wrong. Right, I'm trying. I'm they, trying. they were going out. They no, were a thing. No, no, no. Ah. Go- look, look, they were a thing and the relationship was falling oh. apart. She snogged she, when when the relate our relationship, when mine and Mickey's relationship was falling apart, she snogged Melissa. But wouldn't uh-huh. snog Chris, and she wouldn't snog me, uh-huh. and I felt uh-huh. bad about and it. And it's like mate. I know, I know, but try and telling young Chris who's about twenty one and is the first proper girlfriend he had that this is all right, and I was just like, right. Oh, and God. the soccer team lost. Yeah, and, right. the so- and exactly, it's the <laughs> end right. of a bad day. So you're saying what's good for the goose is good for the snogger. But how do you guys deal with now? How long have you been not in a relationship? <laughs> Quite a long time, about five years, six years. Is that a problem? Longer or? than that. No, it's not it's a about seven years. So you yeah. had, was there a transition that was kind of weird? Yeah, I think there was probably about about four or five months. When were you was, in a band? So you were the yeah. Band I mean, we, we were in the band when it all went off, and then oh. and it was just sort of like you know when you have to be in close proximity. But I thought we it were was, quite we adult do, about and we do, it, and we have done really well. Or I well. was anyway. And yeah. right now, you guys, you guys are just friends yeah. now, and, and everything's look, fine. Look, I lodge around at her house. He it, lives in my house in now. Yeah. And but Chris, do you ever seriously you ever get drunk and go in the room for a little snog action? Yeah, I get the old meat cleaver uh. when, there's, <laughs> when there's men round. Right. And I go like, oh, yeah, you do a manual <laughs> snogging of yourself. Oh, oh, when there's Mickey's no, he doesn't. He just tries to get revenge. When Mickey's lady friends around, <laughs> then the, it really comes out. Yeah. So you will snog your own wanker if need be. Uh, yeah. Fine. <laughs> so here's a good message. People call in, they say, oh, we're broken up, it'll never, you know, we'll never be able to see the person again, or I'm going to be in pain for the rest of my life. But you get over it, and eventually... But it takes can... about six months. No, it, six it, years, it, actually. It does take time. It does right. take time, it but take you, you, time, the but... best thing about it is that you can do it, and it and you, it's worth going through that sort of, you know, as opposed to just sort of like splitting up with someone and not actually talking to them ever again, which right. I'm sure happens a lot. That it, I mean, we were sort of like shoved into the situation because we were in the band and we had to rehearse and we had to do Yeah, all but you the... were going to leave. I know, I was. Well, what was it Chris did that was not as adult as... Well, no, because no. we split up and you and you were going to leave. You yeah. were like, no, that's it, I'm going yeah. home. I'm going home to the north of England and like, I'm going to walk around the field for the rest of my life. It's uh, Chris <laughs> and Mickey from Lush and a little snog talk. And the beauty of maintaining the relationship <laughs> after you guys have had the physical relationship is you both know what each other looked like nude. <laughs> For the rest of your life, right? I don't think yeah. either of us wants to remember that, actually. <laughs> I think Mickey looks a bit different. Oh, oh broader right, in the beam. Right, right. Broader in the beam. Let's argue during the commercial. Here we go again. The phone number for Love Line, 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Tonight's guest, Lush, we have Chris and Mickey, who we just uh, found out before the last break, were snog partners uh, <laughs> once upon a time, but they've uh, they've matured. And there's no problem when you're going out and and uh, let's say, oh, let me ask Chris, when you see Mickey and and she's you know a guy's interested in her or something like that, do, does it ever any old emotion ever kick up in you? Um, no. No, you never get it the gets... urge to go snog one of the roadies or something. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, but that's, that's, but that's apart something else. From that, that's okay. Apart from that, I just got that urge. That's healthy. Aaron, nineteen, you're on Love Line. Hi guys. Hey. Um. Okay, I was messing around with my girlfriend, and um, I'm like very easily turned on, and I just I'd be laying next to her with the erection, and uh, like she'd start like master, she'd like I don't know, start playing with my penis and. She'd say that there's stuff coming out of it, and I was like, what? And she'd show me, like, she'd show it to me, and I was wondering if that could be, like, chlamydia. No, no, that, that's semen. That's a bad gasket, right? No, it's, it's not a bad gasket. It's what, it's what pretty much all guys produce, and it's why the withdrawal method doesn't prevent pregnancy, because you emit sperm before you ejaculate. And, and isn't semen uh, sort of uh, nature's grease? Yeah, yeah. Wow, he agreed with me. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, but there's sperm in the semen, right? 
But but not as much sperm in the semen as there is sperm in the sperm? There's debate about it. Some people believe that that pre-ejaculate stuff is actually more concentrated in sperm. Well, what do you mean? They think, can't you guys figure that out? Don't you have a microscope? Not, yeah. Have you done tests? There's done tests, and there's some, it, it's, it's, but there's no consensus about it. The fact is there's sperm there, and it can, it can cause pregnancy. Right. Mm. Okay? It, so it just takes one. It, yeah, right. And you, so you, you don't have to have ejaculation to get somebody pregnant, right? That's why if you have sex and withdraw before you have ejaculation, you could still get somebody pregnant. Okay. Okay? Thanks, guys. All right. All righty. Joe. Hello? 15 on Loveline with Lush. <clears throat> hey, Lush. Hey, Hi. Mickey. Hi. You're beautiful. Oh, yeah, obviously. She certainly is. <laughs> oh, I saw your mom in that movie. What, the James Bond thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, who's your mom? <laughs> so you're Japanese, right? Sean Connery. <laughs> what, my mum's yeah. Sean Connery. Wh which James Bond movie? You Only Live Twice. Uh, yeah, she was really good. She, was that Roger Moore? No, 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 was it was Sean. It was Sean. Sean. It was Big Sean. Oh. And she was which one in that? Well, there's a scene where they're sort of... There's these Japanese women in these sort of bikinis, these white bikinis. All right, slow down. Let me close my eyes. All right, go <laughs> okay. ahead. Okay. Have you got your eyes closed? Yes, go right, ahead. Okay. So there's these Japanese women, and they're surrounding him and the bad guy, and they're washing their backs. Oh, yes. They're giving them this, the the uh, Asian sud bath. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, my mum's the one with the bob, you know. She and she's a... in the titles as well. You can see her eyes. Uh, yeah, she's in the you know the famous. James no, but Bond. she's not. She's not the naked thing oh, swinging no. on the the end of a pistol or that something. Was Mickey. You know. <laughs> no, I was in it. She, yeah, Mickey was in it. I was in it. She was three months pregnant, so I'm in there somewhere. Right. What? But you didn't get a SAG card out of it, did you? <laughs> I didn't even get a credit. <laughs> we got a Taft Hartley the fetus. All right, a little inside uh, acting humor there. Now, Hello? so Mickey, your mom's an actress or she model? She was. Wow! So reluctantly, that's, it's kind of a neat little uh, piece of history. Joe. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I had to ask you something. Okay, um, is it true that in Europe they don't circumcise? They don't, unless you're Jewish. Oh, really? Well, yeah, they, it's they, purely no. a religious thing. Yeah. So they don't do that. Well, why do they do it here then? It's it's not as prevalent. I mean, is it only a religious no, thing? No, it's there? not. It, I think they. People do obviously circumcise, but but they don't really. It's not. It's, it's not. not like isn't a sort of health? Um, you know, like I never really thought. About no, it. I think they only do it if you're Jewish. Is that, okay, they do a lot like over here. Yeah. And like I told this one girl, and, and she, she laughed at me. No. The what? The what happened? I told this one girl. Yeah. The what? The what? And you, she laughed at you. And she laughed at me. You know, over the years, what? we've had people complain. Well, that sucks. And another thing, I had to ask Dr. Drew this. Yeah. Okay, this is really... I don't know if I can say it. Okay, <laughs> I can do something that most people can't do, and I want to know if it's normal. I can I can give myself oral sex. All right. Really? You <laughs> lucky do man. It. Now, do you, do you take your penis off to do this, or can you reach it while <laughs> no, it's still I on? I do it three ways. I either do it standing up, and I kind of look like a lowercase f, <laughs> or I sit on a chair and I do it, or I do like a backwards somersault. Oh, jeez, your parents... I'll tell you, if your parents ever walked in in the middle of that, they would just be mortified. Well, actually, my big brother did walk in on that. Oh, oh for your legs akimbo, your ass in the air. You're probably on his bed. No, I was I was standing up when I did it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he he started bursting out laughing. And then he asked me how I could do it. Really? Now, Joe, is that a combination between flexibility uh, and and uh, <laughs> penis size? I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm. I don't Give know. me your address. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go out with you. This guy would be the ultimate boyfriend, wouldn't he? Because if you ever had a headache, where'd you say, hey, Joe, go blow yourself. Get out of here. Well, but, Joe, you can't really give yourself that I much pleasure. I swear to God, I can't. I swear to God. You, you don't swallow. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the first date. No, but, but well, I also have, I have a slight case of scoliosis. So could that be anything relating to Yeah, you, you know why you have scoliosis, Joe? Because you can't stay away from your own penis. It serves you right, mate. My, eventually, the spine will bend if you're spending half your waking hours on your penis. I've got hairs on my palm. But I've only been able to do this to myself since about Christmas time. And Little like, something extra in the stocking, huh, Joe? Yeah. All right, Joe. That's jo not normal, is it? Well, it's not, but it's kind of like a lot of things aren't normal. Doesn't necessarily make them bad. Although you don't want to, you don't want to make a career out of it. Why not? 
<laughs> Why not? Because who's going to pay you to stay home and blow yourself? Jim oh, Rose Circus, Circus. Sideshow, yeah. All right. Join the Jim Rose Circus Sideshow. You'll make a killing. That's not normal at all, is it? It's not. So, like, no one can do that except for me? No, I'm sure there's Joe, another person somewhere in the world. Joe, you well, do they're not have... it a secret if they hear you. Yeah, it's just most people don't get on the radio and broadcast the fact that their brother caught them pleasuring themselves orally. It's just one well, you laughed. Okay. Sure. All right. So, Joe, you're one in a million. I'm one in a million. Yeah, I mean, certain people have a they they can you know they can play the violin. Others have an incredible mind for uh, numbers, calculations, and mathematics. Joe can blow himself. That's the way he's defined himself. Fantastic. Huh. Hey, if I could do it, I'd do it. Chris, you with me? I might do. Yeah, I haven't tried recently. I just wonder how you discover you can. <laughs> Joe Blow would be his new name. You have to try really hard. <laughs> All right, well, if I can't do it myself, Chris, you'll help out, right? Oh. <laughs> Come on, we know. Oh, We've already established you dig the blokes. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, 30, you're on Love Line. <laughs> I'm still wiping the tears from that kid, Joe. <laughs> I, can't uh, I can't stop laughing. Hey, if I was that kid, Joe, I'd never leave the house. No kidding. <laughs> well, right. Chris, Mickey, refreshing to hear your accent on the uh, radio. Uh, 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 I've got family over there. I'm watching the Queen right now on public broadcasting, but that's yeah. besides the point. Uh, one of the questions, or one of the, uh, uh, I had, uh, I had to say something about the person that called in and was wondering about shaving themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done it before. My fiance, my ex fiance, used to do it for me too. Used to do it herself for me, and uh, she liked it. She liked, you know, she liked all that bush out of the way. Actually, you know, what your your analogy of the uh, uh, mailbox was quite. <laughs> it looks bigger, doesn't it? Definitely. Yes. Uh, I think so. From from up here, it does. <laughs> Absolutely. Course, I'm not as talented as Joe. Um, <laughs> one of the questions that I had, it was, it was for everybody who, anybody who wants to answer it. Um, I just moved here from Philadelphia about five weeks ago to get away from my fiancé, my ex-fiancé. Uh, we're together for four years, had a daughter together up in Buffalo, uh, broke up. I moved to Philly. Three months later, she's on the phone calling me. Well, I just don't know, like, if she gets on the phone now, like in, you know, another month or so and calls me up out in California, oh, bring me out there, I just, you know, she was snogging, I guess she's snogging my uh, cousin's roommate. Mm. You know? I mean, what if she gets on the phone and calls me up and says, oh, bring me out to California? I mean, I've got a good enough job, I could afford it. She do, you, do, you, do you make enough to fly the cousin out, too, or the cousin's roommate out as well? Yeah, okay. All right, Phil, this is not a good situation. She's got a new guy, right? Uh, probably a few of them. Okay. You know? So you, you guys are done. You, you made a clean break. Definitely. You got I, out of I, town. When I, when I moved to Philadelphia, she's, you know, she's only five and a half hours away. So I used to drive to Buffalo every other weekend. Right. But now that's done. That's in the past. Oh, definitely. That's why I drove all the way the heck out to uh, California. All right. But what about the kid, Phil? Uh, I love my daughter. And, uh, you know, I talk to her on the phone and I send her stuff. And, uh, you know, I'd be going back for Christmas and stuff All like right. That. So, you're, Phil, your relationship now, or the priority of your relationship, is with your daughter and enough with your ex fiance so that you can have a relationship with your daughter. Right? Definitely. All right, so you know what the answer is. Yeah, but well, what if this what if this chick call you? Know, I mean, I mean, I still love her. You know, I mean, she. It's just, I mean, it's really hard for me. You know? Yeah, I know, I know, it's a hard time, but she. It, it doesn't sound like a good one if she's already hooked up with another guy. I, bet, I still yeah, love her stuff. Was what last is that? Time, you know, she was she was last time. We broke up for three months. Then it's like she calls me. It's like, oh, the long distance relationship doesn't bother me. We spent about two grand in phone, in phone bills in a year. You know, I was back every other weekend. It's just like, I just don't want her to call up and, you know, I'm trying to... I'm Phil, trying to Phil, don't empower her. It is you. Yeah. Don't worry about what she's going to do to you. Worry about how you handle it. You know what I'm saying? Don't give her that kind of power. Yeah, you definitely. you got a good instinct. You you knew things weren't right. Things weren't working out. Got out. And you got out. So, so believe your hunch, would you? Yeah. But you still got to stay I love it out here in Northern California. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. What's that? You still got to stay in touch with your kids. Absolutely, oh, definitely. All right. I love my daughter. She's my life. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, she's not it, your it, life. She's not your life. She she was she was a she was a big part of my decision to move out here. It weighed heavily on me. She's out here to move out to California. No, it's why it was a tough decision okay, for yeah. her. And I mean, that's why it was a tough decision for me to you know to be able to make you know. It's not your like, life. You know, they, well, it's not your one, life. One but every good, child well, needs a daddy. That's right. But the, but he he. 
He's not being the daddy 3,000 miles away. Uh, the daddy is not somebody who sends money and shows up at Christmas. Yeah, yeah but, 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 you know, you've got to do your best. That's right. I Give mean, it to him, Mickey. Go ahead, like you did to me. Go. Give him. No, I just think. No, okay. I think you're going to be the daddy. Daddy's there every day. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, you know, you can't just say that that's the end of it. If, if I'm going to duck out, then that's the end of it. I do think that. No. It's you know, better than nothing. Drew is trying to say uh, this is not an excuse for fatherhood, but right. certainly better than the total absenteeism. Right. And better than staying there and having the kid crying in the hallway while you get into drunken spats with the uh, woman that you cannot stand. Yeah. But it's All right. America is such a big place. England, you can sort of visit, you know. No matter where you are. Yeah, right. Where are you? Everyone no, lives no, on top no, of it. No, on, anywhere is a big place. I know people in England who have got kids who are like don't visit. less than yeah. like right. 20 miles away. Enough they don't about visit. saving the youth of America. Let's let's sell some product here. All right. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to play a song off of uh, Love Life called 500. All right. And uh, it. We'll just say it'll be self-explanatory, and we'll get into it after we hear it. 500 off a of Love Life from Lush, and uh, we'll talk to Lush a little more after this. We's back with Chris Auckland and Mickey Brenny. It's Auckland, really. Auckland. You see, you've been trying so hard to get Brenny right. You've been getting more No, no, Auckland. you said Auckland. 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 That's the way a, a stupid American would say he's, it. A he's fat, a direct stupid American. descendant of, of Edward, Edward the III. III. Really? I'm royalty. Oh, jeez. He's rolling over in his grave seeing you wanking with those moshers. <laughs> Winking. Winking with them wankers. <laughs> Oh, he would have he would have very stern words for you, young young lad. All right. Well, anyway, they're both in lush, and uh, I swear to God, you said Auckland. But anyway, we're going back to the phones, eh, Drew? Yeah, yeah. Wayne. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, you're 18. You're on Love Line with Lush. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Uh, <laughs> I got a problem, guys. Oh man, my girlfriend. She's been dating. Well, she's not technically my girlfriend, but she is. She's been dating this guy for five months, and she's having her different feelings about him. She loves him, but she wants to break up with him because he's an alcoholic, a drug user, and all this other crap. Um, and I'm telling her, hey, you need to break up with him. He's just going to hurt you later down the line. But she also likes me. But I can tell her until I'm blue in the face, and she won't listen to me. I just need some help. What can I do? All right. She's just she's a friend of yours, and she's a girl. Right. And you've, have you guys ever had any uh, physical contact? Uh, besides kissing? No. Okay, but you have at least sort of uh, yeah, breached yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And um, and you, you, you've liked her? Yeah. You always have? Yeah. How long have you known her? I've known her a year and a half. And you've always liked her? Yeah. Has she always been with this guy? Um, that I know of, yeah. All right, so she kissed you and sort of fooled around on him. Well, he knows that... I'm dating her right now, but they're kind of like separated. But her, she has really strong feelings for him and not me. Uh, yeah, All right. what a mess, Wayne. Yeah, this is uh, this is like taking your ego out back to the woodshed and beating the crap out of it. This is demoralizing. Yeah, I mean we've all done this kind of thing before and maybe not maybe not to this extreme but we've all had versions of basically going out with someone who really didn't want to go out with us as much as we wanted to go out with them uh bobcat was kind enough to uh, bring up one of my low points last night on the show and it, it really does it's demoralizing yeah you don't need that because what it does is it basically you end up walking around staring at your shoes sort of half a man and it it doesn't enable you to get out there and find others because you're you're beaten, you're broken. I see what you're saying. It's like when those two soccer teams uh, played and one of them lost, <laughs> and Chris was driven to another man. <laughs> All right. All right, I want to hear I want to hear from a, a lady's point of view. All right, I'll give you the lady's point. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> you you're not a lady. No. Adam. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, and you're no gentleman, sir. Oh, come on. Mickey, what well, do you think? I think that, oh, I don't know. Oh, you know. You know, I think that a lot of blokes fall in love with girls who need help. You know, that all, all women love a bastard, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you feel like you're there to rescue them. You're going to fix everything up and make it better. <laughs> well, you know, that, that you're better than the bloke that, 
who's treating them terribly, you know what I mean? And then they and they don't actually want that. They think of you as a friend, but they don't actually want you as a lover or anything. You know, they just want you there to solve their problems, which is understandable in a way, I think. But pff, it is a bit of a waste of time, really. He's a waste. Of, the other bloke's a waste of time. <clears> if he's a well, drug. the other bloke's a waste of time, and we all but, know but that. But he's already. got like a bit of a sort of excitement about him. Yeah, if he's a drug addict she's and obviously. he's an alcoholic, you know, right? It's like, yeah, I mean, all oh, right, I'm not like you know. A drug user. I mean, I want to get away. I want to get her away from. Right. But I also I also care for her very deeply. But this this is like this is like a stair step in codependency. She's codependent on him and you're codependent on her. I'm not You're going to she's going to fix him and you're going to fix her. I'm gonna it's like fix. a big a big ladder, big chain. I'm fix, I want to help fix her. That's yeah. what I'm saying and that that is a very sick position Which to be in when, yeah, when not, you're in a relationship. That's not the way you go out with That someone. is not the way you conduct yourself in a relationship and that's what she's trying to do with him. You're you're trying to convince her to change and not do exactly what you're doing. But she, right. It, she sorted herself out and then went out with someone else. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, and she, no, no, she is... Yeah, exactly. You don't go out with someone because you want to like heal them. You go out with someone because you, you enjoy really, their company yeah. and you love right. them. They're not cars. I mean, they're not projects. They're not hobbies. Well, or at least they shouldn't be. Well, they should be in good running condition when you find them. <laughs> they shouldn't be burning any oil. That's kind of cute, Adam, but listen. Before I... Before I don't don't w- crack wise to me, Wayne. <laughs> Well, before I knew that she was dating this guy, uh, you know, she was kind of hitting on me like, you know, I want to go out with you type of thing. And when we started going out, and she goes, well, I, I have some bad news to tell you. I'm like, what? And I said, M- no. Let me think of the worst thing it, it could be. And it was. Right. All right. All right. But already, Wayne, listen, she's a little bit flawed if she's out flirting with you while she's in another relationship. She won't well, leave no, the no, relationship. No, no. Maybe she's a bit confused, you know. Well, what, no, all right. No, confused no. is just sort of nice for screwed up, though. Oh, I think that's a little unfair. Well, look. I she's, mean, if she's going out with this bloke who's a, an alcoholic and a drug addict, then I, I would say that she's got a certain really right to be confused. All right. Well, then I'll revise my statement and say don't date confused people. <laughs> They're very confused. It's hard to make a decision when you're confused. You're, she's going out with a guy who's an addict. She's leading, w- dragging Wayne along by the penis. Wayne is being played for a fool, and it's not going to work out. Wayne has to salvage some dignity, pull himself up by his bootstraps, get out there, and find somebody who's going to treat Wayne like the mediocre right. and uh, intellect that he is. Wayne is confused, and his girlfriend is confused. They both need to terminate the relationships that they're in. Great. All right. Everyone ends every relationship and moves on. Kelly, 21, you're on Love Line with Lush. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. I'm good. Um, I kind of have a small problem with um, a call with a nine-month-old pregnant, or the nine, nine-month nine pregnant girl. She was 19. When Adam when Adam was going off on her? Mm-hmm. What'd I do? <laughs> the whole thing about welfare really ticked me off. Why? Well, um, I'm a mother of two children. Right. I work full time and I go to school part time and I try to take care of my children as best as I possibly can. Um, When I had my first son, Andrew, I was on welfare for about six months. And that was to get my feet up off of the ground. I don't think anybody should be ashamed or should have a problem with getting welfare. Absolutely not. You know, actually, my mom got welfare and food stamps. I don't have a problem with welfare, I have a problem with people getting pregnant again while they're still not being able to take care of the one that they currently have. Right. That's what I was saying. Right. But it's, it's tough enough already with her being pregnant and, and basically almost being completely alone. You know, and, and I, was, I was in the exact same position that she was in. Um, it's, it's really tough as being a young woman. W- wouldn't a reasonable solution, and I, and I don't mean to judge or be disparaging, but it just mm-hmm. makes common sense to me, that people should pay more attention to not having kids and have you're, kids when they when they absolutely yeah right. when they can establish a family and have can't afford it and they're more settled and more stable in a relationship yeah, stable financially do that. hang on hang on just uh, just makes right. sense just makes sense all right you're absolutely right but things do happen I know I understand and and, 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 and you're not a bad really person Kelly because right. that happened I'm, I when, when I express my outrage at people for doing it, no, it it's an outrage that it's happening to people not that they're bad but that right. they that they're not paying attention right. I understand. that they let this happen to themselves I don't, I don't believe that anybody should take advantage of the system at all whatsoever. It's there to help you. It's not there to support you completely. Right. I agree with that. And, I mean, 
things happen, like I say. All right, but they shouldn't happen two, three, and four times. Well, not necessarily. When when I had my first son, I, I didn't have a father. And then I met somebody. I got married, and I got pregnant again. And then, bam, right after we got married, he got very abusive towards me. Mm-hmm. I spent one night in the hospital. He spent one night in jail, and then that was the end of our marriage. And they have a kid, another kid. Right. And... um. You know, and there, there I was again. You know, stuck now. Did she have the nor plant? Yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Excuse me. Yes, you are a prime candidate for the nor for my nor plant plan. The nor plant plan. Yes, it is the way of the future. No, no, I'm not. Not everyone. I will send one of my representatives to your hometown. Not Not everyone can have nor plant, but I mean, now that I'm a single mother, I'm raising two children on my own. I. I go to school part time. I work full time. I do the best I can. Great. But I mean, everybody can become a victim of absolutely anything. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even. But it, 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 again, let's not be victims as much as we possibly can. Well, and that, that's what we're saying. And people get upset at me for coming down on <clears throat> people who call and not coddling them enough. But see, that's the deal. That's not the object of this show. The object of the show is not necessarily to coddle whoever called. The object is to get the other people that are listening, who may be sort of on the borderline, not to get into the same pickle that the caller is now in. So sometimes it sounds a little cruel that we're coming down or I'm coming down on the caller, but really I'm trying to talk to people who may be close to making the same mistakes. All right, but I think you should also say that a lot of these women who have had children are quite happy that they had them. They're, they never sound happy. Well... They never do. They call do. up, I they say, I'm 19. I do actually think there's a lot of single-parent mothers who are very happy that they had their Yes, children. there are. Yes, there are. But but not at 16, 17. And, not, and, and they're really pretty desperate when they're that young. Well, and not with no husband and no money and, and no job oftentimes. But uh, kids are beautiful. All right, fine. All right, let's move on. I want to thank Lush for coming in tonight, Chris and Mickey. It was a pleasure. We got into some fun topics, a little debate, a uh, little uh, noggling or whatever the hell that was Bit going politics. on there. Some politics and a generally a uh, stimulating time for all. At least I had a good time. I want to urge everyone to go out who doesn't already own Love Life and go buy that Lush CD. It sounds real good. I heard it today. And... Uh, uh, besides the hits that they played on the station, but I heard the whole thing and it sounded real good. And don't give me that puss. I listened to it and I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> he did. He I did, did really. Yes, and I'll listen to it all the way home. Uh, Doctor Drew is just stepping in uh, long enough to say bye. Do you want to give a quick plug there, Drew? Yes, please come join us Sunday night, seven o'clock at Caltech, and we'll broadcast from there afterwards and uh, come see how we do this. Beautiful. Thing. And I'm, I hopefully will. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to get some Weenie Rose tickets. I'll have them announced over the weekend. All right, quick, that. don't dangle that in front of the well, kids. Well, somebody's got to. And besides. It's, it's wanker Probably. roast now. <laughs> I want to thank uh, the lovely Lisa for doing a great job on the phone tonight. The lovely Sherry for always doing a great job on the phone tonight. The Angular One producer, Ann, for guiding the show in a good direction. I want to thank the One Nut Wonder engineer, Mike, for being very competent on the board. I want to thank myself for being semi-competent behind the mic. And Dr. Drew and Chris and Mickey from Lush. And we'll talk to you Sunday. Been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.